Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shamir today. Thank you going to go out today, see if things came out, see if things are on sale. I know today though the big release is the film Shazam. And I know uh, Best Buy has an exclusive uh, steelbook of that one. I think Walmart has one that comes with like a little mini Funko Pop, I believe. I'm not sure though on Target if they have any exclusive of that one. Also though, one big thing I want to let you guys know though, which I haven't talked about yet was for those wondering, I will be going to the San Diego Comic Con. So I'll be doing Comic Con videos all this week, like um, be on the lookout late week. Wednesday evening for my you know DVD Blu-ray and toy hunting video that will be going up and then I'll be doing on Friday the Comic Con tour as well as I'll do a video on Saturday as well so let me know in the comments below though anything specific you guys would like me to show at the San Diego Comic Con convention like any specific booths any specific toys anything like specific any of that kind of stuff leave them you know below in this video and I'll make sure to like look for them and all that kind of stuff for the uh, upcoming Comic Con videos also though at the end of this video is gonna be a whole bunch of brand new DVD Blu-ray and 4 4K reviews, some things I received to review and talk about for you guys, some really, really cool titles this time around too, some really cool stuff, so definitely stay tuned for those, and also, as always, leave me cons below, you know, let, let me know what you guys thought of the DVDs and Blu-rays that I reviewed, if you guys have seen any of them, also if you guys plan on picking any of them up, but anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And then in here today, like I was saying, the big thing that came out was the film Shazam and the 4K Ultra HD edition of that one here is uh, $29.99 for that one. I actually really like this movie. I'm going to be talking about this one at the end of this video. I don't know if they don't have an exclusive here or not. I'm not seeing one and there was no standee or anything out. So I'm not sure if there was. I feel like there was going to be, but maybe I'm wrong about that. The DVD though of Shazam, that one's a $17.99 for that. And then the, uh, the Blu-ray here is $24.99. The Blu-ray one has a really cool lenticular cover when it changes to the kid and then when he changes you know says Shazam he changes to the you know Shazam version of himself the, the, the old adult version of himself it's actually a really really cool lenticular cover and this is like a standard one this isn't one that's like exclusive to anywhere like I said that one's $24.99 other than that though the movie uh, Breakthrough which I'm going to talk about this one at the end of this video as well as Shazam will be having a review of the 4k at the end this one released today this one's $19.99 for that one other than that the one the other ones that I wanted they don't don't seem to have out and I asked them and they said they don't have any in the back then we team spirit so maybe I'll find that someone else you know another target I off to see but I might call one and see if they have it or not if not I'll just end up getting it on Amazon and then the other one today was a uh, fast color that one's $69.99 for that that one isn't on the shelf either though and this is one of the ones that came out last Tuesday which I, I didn't see anywhere and like if you guys have seen this movie called after let me know if this one's worth checking out or not I really don't know much about it so let me know if that one's worth picking up down the line when it, you know, whenever the price goes down for that one. And then Gotham, this was last Tuesday as well. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the main things in here that are new. And like I said, it's a shame, though, that the Teen Spirit's not out here. I really, really like that one, though. And also, guys, if you guys didn't hear, I talked about last Tuesday how I got cast in the new action comedy film with some real cool like horror aspects as well. And it's like a total throwback 80s style film called 16 Bits. If you guys didn't get a chance to, though, I'll have a link, you know, see it yet. I'll have a link below, you know, so you guys can find out more about the uh, project and the Indiegogo for the movie. But definitely check out the link for that one below. Into Walmart we go. I also did call a Target that said they had Teen Spirit in, so I'm going to go there next after that. They said they had three of them, so hopefully, you know, that one has it there. They said they were going to hold it, so fingers crossed it's there. And in here, though, like I was saying, though, they have an exclusive edition here of Shazam, which is the only at Walmart one, which has the little Funko Pop pocket keychain in there. That one's $29.99 for that one, and that includes the Blu-ray in there. And then the 4K here is $29.96 for that one. And then uh, the uh, standard Blu-ray DVD combo, that one's $24.99. And it's funny, their one has a different cover for the DVD version here. They, they do that often, that their Walmart ones are like a, a different cover for the DVD, and that one's $16.96 for that. Also, though, Breakthrough, uh, the 4K of that one here is $24.96, and then the DVD and um, Blu-ray combo, that one's $19.96 for that. Other than that, though, they do have this one movie down here, which came out, this one, Family, which kind of looked interesting. I don't think this one has a Blu-ray release. I don't know if it's going to have a Burn On Demand one, down the line. I read like mixed reviews on this one, but it sounded really interesting though. It's like um, the one character taking her, I think it was her niece or 
I think I think that's what it is. Yeah, she's taking her niece, I believe, to an ICP concert. It sounded kind of ridiculous, like kind of interesting. Like I said, I don't know. Like I, I like review wise, like I said, the reviews were not amazing on it. But I might get this one. And it, but it may be one of those ones they do like a burn on demand or manufacture on demand Blu-ray of down the line. Other than that, though, um, this one came out today. This uh, Scott Atkins film here, which is a uh, Shout Factory release of this movie called Abduction. So I don't know much about this. If you guys have seen that, let me know how this one was. That one's $14.96 for the Blu-ray and $12.96 for the DVD. And they have um, also for, also for $29.99 uh, Luther, the complete uh, series here. They have that one in here. And also this one, um, From the Earth to the Moon, came out for the first time on Blu-ray. This one of these ones I remember really Really well because I used to always like as a kid was going to Florida all the time to Disney and I remember like there was somebody that I knew there who was like working at the hotel I think the security guy or something and he had like a part in the show so he was always like telling us about it so like for some reason anytime I think of this I think I, I remember this hotel called Summerfield Suites which isn't there anymore and the guy who was like the security guard talking about how he was like acting in the show and I think it was shot in Florida too like a lot of it because of that's where you know the, the NASA is you know, so I think that they shot a lot of it there. So I always remember that really well, that guy talking about that. Also, though, they have Fast Color here. That one's on $17.96 for the Blu-ray, $12.96 for the DVD. Other than that, though, that seems to be all the major new things in here that I see today. I don't see anything else different over here where it's the 4Ks or anything, though. Like I said, other than that, that seems to be all the main new things in here today. Yeah, so I ended up getting that, you know, family one in there. The Earth of the Moon one, I forgot to say the price of that one, though. That one was, you know, $22.99 for the Blu-ray of the Earth of the Moon one. But yeah, this one, like I said, the reviews that I saw on it were not, like, amazing or anything, but the concept sounded really interesting, and it says on here, too, a hilariously raunchy Uncle, you know, Uncle Buck for the modern age. Age. It's like well, Uncle Buck's like one of my favorite movies like of all time. So like I don't know like I said the concept of going to like you know the insane clown posse thing and all that sounded kind of interesting. So yeah, I picked up the family one in there. Into the second Target we go. And in here in the other location though, like I said, they said they were holding that one at the front or in the electronics area somewhere over here, I'm trying to see though where it actually would be on the shelf. And I don't actually see where it actually would be. One of the other things that came out today, and we talked about this at the end, was the show Titans, the complete first season here. This is actually a really cool show. That's $22.99 for the Blu-ray and $19.99 for the DVD of that. And they have Earth the Moon here as well for $29.99. Luther here for $29.99 as well. Or, I mean, sorry, $22.99 for the Blu-ray of that. Uh, of that. Oh yeah, you know, so here's Teen Spirit. So they do have it down here. Like I said, it's $22.99. I'm gonna try and price match this though to Amazon for $19.99. So we'll see if they can do it though. Yeah, so I ended up getting that in there and they did end up price matching it to Amazon, so it was $19.99. So if any of you guys are interested in getting this, you can price match that on, you know, for the Amazon price and Target. Uh, if Walmart had it though, they, they don't do, like I found that out last week, they don't do price matching anymore except for their own website. And we'll see if, you know, Best Buy has Teen Spirit, but when I looked online, it had that thing that says not sold in stores. So they, sometimes that's not always correct, but we'll see. I'm going to head over there next though. And this past weekend, I saw a couple of different films. The first one I saw was the film uh, Crawl, which is, you know, from the director who did the Hills Have Eyes remake. He also did High Tension, the Piranha remake. I really like his stuff, though. I really like the Hills Have Eyes remake. I feel like that's probably one of my top, you know, favorite, you know, horror remakes. I feel like that was actually pretty well done. This one, though, was absolutely an intense, intense must-watch movie. It's just about this girl, though, who was it's all set during this um, terrible hurricane that was coming to Florida and she was like calling her father and her father wasn't picking up and he, she's like kind of panicking like why, why is he not picking up what is going on and she goes to the the uh, the apartment he's not there and she's like oh well maybe he's at the house that he's you know our old house that he's trying to sell so she goes there and you know of course though she can't figure out where he is and he's under the house messing around like working on something in kind of like the crawl space kind of like stuff directly under the house. So she goes under there looking for him and it's basically what ends up happening though is it's her trapped down there with her father and there are these, you know, enormous alligators that are down there. And that's basically all you can really say about the movie is it's a survival film about them with this hurricane coming, this terrible hurricane. It's like in the early stages and it's getting worse and worse and then they're trapped down there with these alligators. It's a, like I said, a super, super 
intense movie. And, you know, I thought it was all, you know, really well done all around. And it was one of those, like I said, real tense, super thrilling movies, like just crazy, crazy stuff happening. The other one I saw was the film Stuber, which stars, you know, uh, Batista. And I think it's Camille Najat. Now, now, I never know say his last name correctly, but he was, you know, starred in The Big Sick. And I always think of him as well for his part in Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates as like the massage guy. I felt like that was like the steam stealing part in that movie. Like he was hilarious in that movie. Uh, but it's basically though about, um, you know, Camille, Camille's character who is the Uber driver and, um, you know, he's like kind of like has bad luck with getting good ratings and stuff on there. And, you know, he keeps getting bad ratings and he tr wants to really be five star driver. And he does that to kind of make more money and everything. And uh, Batista's character, he's like this cop who, you know, in the beginning of the movie, something, you know, find out happens to his partner and he's trying to track down this one bad guy. He's like, it's like his life goal is to find this guy. And, um, you know, he finally thinks he has the lead on where this person is. But it was the same day he had LASIK eye surgery. So his eye, his vision is totally blurry and he can't see well at all so then he ends up getting an uber and it ends up getting in camille's uber and it's kind of them working together you know you know against camille's characters he doesn't really want to be doing this but he kind of gets stuck because he wants to get five star rating and it's kind of them trying to track down these people having all sorts of problems and everything it's one of those movies though where i feel like you know all around though it wasn't perfect like not all the jokes worked and like it didn't have the strongest story but there was some really fun parts in it there really was a couple really fun like scenes in it and luckily enough it was one of those ones where the trailer didn't you know ruin everything there was still some some decent laughs they were in there like some of the like my favorite stuff that you didn't see in the trailer so that was pretty cool but if you guys saw either of those movies you know this past weekend let me know you know what you thought of them or let me know you know what movies you saw this past weekend if you guys got to see anything into Best Buy we go. So in Best Buy, like I was saying, they have the exclusive 4K Ultra HD Shazam Steelbook here. That one's $34.99. But they also have the uh, standard edition 4K. That one's $29.99 for that one. They also have an exclusive Shazam in 3D. So that's pretty cool. They don't always have 3D editions of stuff. So that's a Best Buy exclusive as well. That one is uh, $29.99 for that. Then the standard Blu-ray with the lenticular. That one's $24.99 for that version. And then the uh, uh, DVD one is $17.99 for that. They also have a standee here as well for Shazam and they had a couple of, they only actually had one steelbook left over here so they had a couple steelbooks left but not that many today. And then also in the actual section they had Titans the complete first season here. That one is $22.99 here. But other than that didn't see anything else in here and they also didn't have Teen Spirit as well at least as far as I could tell. So anyway though guys, that's all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave me comments below, you know, what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K, if you guys picked up anything today as well. Also make sure to let me know anything specific you guys want me to show at the San Diego Comic Con and my Comic Con videos. Also too, let me know, you know, what you guys thought of the brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews that are reviewed at the end of this video. But anyway though guys, thanks again for watching and subscribing. Now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Shadow. Out Factory Scream Factory line. It's a movie here called The Leopard Man. This is basically though about this nightclub where it's one of those kind of nightclubs where it's like the performances, like the tables are all around and it's kind of like in the middle is where they do the, the actual performances and things like that and they kind of like move throughout the audience you know why they're sitting there and everything but one of the performances though is um this one woman who's bringing out a, a, a leopard and essentially what ends up happening though is a leopard ends up getting loose and then you know wanders out into the city and it's about like the cops and everything trying to track down and find where this leopard went because the leopard was like um there was like a guy in the in the you know that they the one guy rented the leopard from they're like well can we use this leopard tonight and there's a guy called like the leopard man where he had like a leopard kind of show where they would like travel around like with animals and stuff like that and the leopard was one, was one of his animals so essentially though this leopard that they were barring for the show ended up getting loose in the city and then that night, though, this girl ends up getting killed. And it's basically, though, about, like, trying to find where this leopard is and trying to track it down. And, like, um, and the, I mean, there's also, like, this whole thing kind of, like, they're kind of wondering, though. The one person who's at the club as well that's one of the other performances there, she's kind of wondering if, like, this could be somebody pretending. It's uh, actually, try, you know, killing people and making it look as if the leopard was doing it and kind of, you know, pointing the finger at this leopard. So it's a 
really interesting movie, like the way they put this together. And like, I don't know, just a really, really cool concept and everything. On here, though, this has a brand new commentary track on here with filmmaker and film historian uh, Constant Constantine Nasser, as well as a commentary track on here with filmmaker William Freak uh, Freakin, as well as a theatrical trailer on this one. Uh, picture quality as well looks really, really good here. And the next one I got here is from Shot Factory, Screen Factory line as well. And this one is also a Hammer horror film. It's a movie here called Quatermass in the Pit. This is basically, though, about their um, you know, digging going on in the uh, London subway system to, to expand and build a new uh, section of the subway tunnel. And when they're down there, though, they end up discovering these skeletal remains as well as this weird type of metal down there. They, just, they can't figure out exactly what this is. And at first, they think it could be one thing, and they're not really sure. And it's essentially, though, about them calling in this professor who's coming in to kind of investigate it and try and figure out exactly what this is. Because it's like something, you know, it's an area where no one's been before, no one's been down there before, so they can't exactly figure out exactly why there would be these remains there and what all of it means. And it's sort of him kind of looking into the whole thing and trying to investigate it and doing all this certain research and everything, as well as like, you know, starting to discover little by little more and more weird things and like what this all might really mean. It's actually a really, really cool movie here. This has a whole bunch of different features on here. Uh, some of the features this has is a brand new commentary track on here with film historian Bruce uh, G. Hallenbach, as well as a new commentary track on here with filmmaker uh, Constantine Nasser, as well as film historian Steve Haberman. has a commentary track on here with the director and the writer of the film. It has a bunch of different interviews. One of the interviews that's cool they have on here is um, with Joe Dante. It also has a World of uh, Hammer Horror episode on here, which is a sci on, on sci-fi films, the sci-fi Hammer Horror movies, as well as theatrical trailers on this one. It has a TV spots, uh, alternate U.S. credits for this one, as well as a still gallery. And the next one here is from uh, Screen Factory as well. And this one here is another Hammer Horror title. This is Quatermass 2. This one, though, is basically, though, about this, um, this scientist who's kind of, this scientist professor who's working on this kind of, um, sort of like, you know, being, being able to put like a, on the, on the moon, like a moon station. And he's kind of working on his plans for it and, you know, trying to like, you know, the idea of like colonizing the moon and living on the moon. And he has this whole plan for like his plans of building it and all that kind of stuff. But, um, he ends up having like really bad luck with getting it to happen and everything. But then it's also that dealing with there's these weird things that are starting to happen out in the middle of the desert, like pieces of thing, like things are falling from the sky, these pieces of like objects and everything. And it's basically about them tracking down to this area where this is happening, like the middle of nowhere in the middle of the desert, you know, and it comes to this real small town where there's some odd things that happened out there. And um, essentially though, you know, nearby though is this uh, factory building that looks very much like his design, you know, pretty much identical to his design for what he was trying to build and wanted to build up on the moon. And it's this weird factory there. And it's essentially, though, him going in there and starting to kind of figure out there's some really odd things going on in there. It's a really, really cool movie. This one here is from uh, 1957. This one ha on here, uh, feature-wise, has a brand new 2K scan from the only surviving film print. This one looks really good. Same with Quartermass and the Pit. That, the, both these films look really, really good. It has a commentary track on here, brand new commentary track on here with a uh, film historian and filmmaker Ted Newson, as well as a new commentary track on here with film historian uh, and author Steve Haberman and film historian, um, you know, and uh, filmmaker Constant uh, Constantine Nasser, as well as it has on here an interview on here with Val Guest. It has an audio commentary with director Val Guest and writer uh, Nigel K Nealman, uh, um, as well as a World of Hammer episode, which is another sci-fi episode on this one. It has a U.S. theatrical trail as well as a still gallery on this one. The next one here is from uh, Lion's Gate, and this is the movie directed by uh, Oliver Stone. This is The Doors' uh, final cut here on 4K. This is one of the Oliver Stone movies which I had never seen before and always really wanted to watch this. This is all about, you know, uh, Jim Morrison from The Doors and about his life and kind of how he was starting in the very beginning with the band. And it kind of has stuff, too, when he was a kid and some of the, this one thing that he witnessed and what, that he saw when he was driving through the desert with his parents. And it's kind of something that kind of has haunted him and haunt, was haunted his life and the, the certain thing that he witnessed. But essentially, though, this is all about how the band kind of was coming together in the very beginning, and it deals and it goes through all the stuff where he was, you know, Jim Morrison, who was having a lot of problems with alcohol and drugs and just, you know, 
you know, issues with the band and, you know, his, he was dating um, Meg Ryan's character in this movie and his relationship with her. But then at the same time, he had all these other different women that he was seeing. And, you know, um, it just kind of goes through all the stuff that, you know, that he was, you know, dealing with in, in his life. It's a really, really well put together here. The thing that was cool, too, was it had... Um, this was filmed before, you know, Natural Born Killers, a few years before Natural Born Killers, but he had some of the same kind of imagery in this one that he had in Natural Born Killers, where it was some of those scenes in, like, the desert and these really trippy kind of sequences, the way it's cut together and some, like, some of the lighting and stuff like that. It's not the same, you know, as Natural Born Killers, which went really crazy with all that kind of stuff, with the crazy lighting and the edits and everything, but this has a small aspect of that in this, and so, some of the sequences in this one, like some of the, you know, the drug few kind of things he's going through and some of the stuff in the desert but I actually really like this movie really good performances in here has a really great cast like uh, Kyle MacLachlan is in here uh, um, you know as I said Meg Ryan uh, Paul Williams has a part in here um, you know um, Crispin Glover has a small part in here so lots and lots of people are popping up in this movie uh, like I said one of those ones I don't know how I never saw before but has on here though on the 4k disc it also has the um, you know a commentary track on here with Oliver Stone and that's on the theatrical cut of the film it has the theatrical cut as well as the, the final cut here you know on 4k it has on here though an interview with oliver stone which is a 4k only interview it was a, it was a new uh, interview on this one it has an interview with the sound editor on this one for the 4k disc on the blu-ray though it has jim morrison with a, a feature out on the film it has deleted scenes the doors in la a theatrical trailer but really really looks great here on 4k like i said it has a lot of like um some of the lighting, there's like these real reddish type scenes with the lights, the way it's put together and the concert scenes and everything. And just the way this was shot and everything, it really, really looks great on 4K. If you guys have the 4K capacities, like I say too, the big thing you notice with 4K is the HDR, which is the contrast levels, which it much, you know, has much more deep le deeper levels to the darks and everything in the film. Also, it's just all around a much brighter picture, just really, really cleaned up well. One of those ones, like I said, I would really, really recommend you guys check this out if you guys have not seen it before. The next one here, is from Lionsgate as well and this is the 4K Ultra HD edition here of uh, the new Hellboy film you know which is um you know, because they made the two Hellboys, you know, that um, Guillermo del Toro directed, which starred, you know, Ron Perlman. So I really like those movies. I had not have not seen both of those in a really long time. This one, though, is um, much more darker with, like, um, kind of more like the graphic novels. And it's also much more, um, you know, R this, this one is R-rated. The, uh, you know, Guillermo del Toro's films were PG-13. So this one is much more gory and kind of like with the levels of violence and everything in it. And I know this one has, you know, some mixed reviews and everything, but I, I liked aspects of this like the actor though playing you know Hellboy you know I feel like you know you know David Harbour I thought he did a really good job in this but it's really hard to compete to you know compete with um, you know Ron Perman's performance as Hellboy like he was so like perfect in that role and like it's kind of like what you always sort of think of him you know when you think of Hellboy you think of Ron Perlman playing him but still uh, David Harbour's character he you know he did you know his character his version of the character he changed it around a little bit and he did his own kind of style to him and I, I, I really did like his interpretation interpretation of the character as well this is basically though about the you know the character of hellboy who you know who came from basically from hell as well as he's you know part human as well but basically though he is kind of like sort of the the protector and he kind of works with this sort of government underground kind of group and um in this one mila jovich's character is this witch that's kind of come back and is planning on like taking over the world and like bringing her army back from the dead and everything and it's basically about him having to go and like um stop this from happening i i liked it though i thought the story wise though there was some really cool stuff that happens in this one like i said it's it's very very like different since it's more like i said it's a more of an r-rated you know it's an r-rated version of the story and much more violent and that kind of stuff but this one has on here though feature wise it has um, the features are both on the blu-ray and the 4k it has a tales of the wild hunt which is hellboy reborn which is a three-part documentary it also has uh, deleted scenes on the movie as well but 4k wise though this is something that looks great on 4k it's super super visual stylized movie the way it's shot and there are also some really cool like characters in this that pop up like these like big 
control kind of characters. Something like that I, I did like because it was it had like a lot more kind of crazy uh, characters and stuff in this one, which I thought was kind of cool. And some cool sequences of him, Hellboy, like going up against this one witch and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I liked it. Like I said, it was very, very different. But there were some cool stuff in it that I really liked. But 4K wise, like I said, looks really, really good on 4K. And like I said, you know, the brightness levels and everything is enhanced. So it looks really good. So if you guys have 4K capacities, definitely would recommend this one. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Lionsgate as well. And it's a movie here called Rock, Paper, Scissors. This is directed by, um, you know, Tom Holland, who directed A Child's Play and A Fright Night. This one uh, stars Michael Madsen, uh, Tatum O'Neill, Ari Lehman has a cameo in this movie. This is basically, though, about this guy who ended up, um, he was like this crazy serial killer who would wear this crazy mask, and he would, like, you know, kill the, all these women and everything, and he ended up getting, you know, arrested and put into the psych ward, and it was like, I think it was like 10 or 20 years, I can't remember how many years it was, I don't think it said for sure how many, but it was like he ended up getting, you know, kind of pleaded insanity because he said, oh, I don't, I don't remember doing this, this at all it was my my brother that did it because you know you know he this guy has like he's like nuts and he has like split personality and everything so like because of that they couldn't put him in like prison they put him into the psych ward and he ends up you know um getting out after being there for a number of years and he goes back to his old house and the second he gets back there though you know Michael Madsen's character is kind of there you know as the cop who you know arrested him and like because he ended up not getting the death penalty though he's like well when I when you get out I'm gonna come for you I'm gonna be following you everywhere you go and everything he was giving him all this like all kind of crap and everything saying you know everywhere you go I'm gonna be following you once if you get out of prison and all that stuff or get out of the nut house. But essentially, though, also, like, he, he kind of stays nearby and is kind of watching the house, watching this guy to make sure he doesn't do anything weird. There's also the new neighbor who just moved in who is there to kind of, you know, write a story on him. And, and there's more to the whole thing. But essentially, though, you know... Um, Right when he gets back, though, he starts to kind of start hearing things again and starts to sort of, like, crack up again. And it's sort of like this whole thing might be starting again that he was going through before uh, Tatum O'Neill is in here playing the uh, doctor in, in the psych ward, which was cool to see her in another movie. You know, she was in lots and lots of stuff, lots of stuff throughout the years, but I always think of her from, like, um, the one movie that, who knows if it will ever come to DVD or Blu-ray, uh, Little Darlings, but she was in lots of stuff. Like Paper Moon and everything. But um, this is one, though, uh, I actually really like this one. I like Tom Holland's stuff. So this was really cool, and I thought he did a really good job on this. And I, I don't know, I just like this story, and it was cool, too, seeing, like, um, Maureen McCormick has a, a cameo in here as well. Like I said, Ari Lehman is in the psych ward in a, in a scene in the beginning. So it's cool, too, seeing, like, some horror cameos and stuff in this one. And the next one here is from Lionsgate as well, and it's a movie here called Puppy Swap, uh, Love Unleashed. And this is basically, though, uh, this one's PG, but it's like, it's got some like, um, it's for kids, but it also has some kind of like stuff that adults would like too, you know, with kind of like the, the, like the relationship kind of problems that are going on in this one. Cause it's basically though about this couple who, you know, um, you know, were together for a while and they ended up both adopting these these dogs from this farm and um, Mar Mar Margot Kidder is in here you know who passed away a year or so ago but she has a really great part in this movie and it's basically though they unknowingly one, one of them goes to one place to adopt the dog but they actually both went to the same place unknowingly so they both ended up adopting the uh, the, the dogs that were related were you know both their um, brothers I think they're actually supposed to, I think, I think uh, technically, I think they're both supposed to be sisters. But basically, though, they end up unknowingly adopting the same, the, you know, the dogs that are, to, you know, related. And they end up coming back together and, like, um, but what ends up happening, though, is they both end up getting, the couple ends up getting, you know, they break up and they, the one of them, she, she ends up wanting to go and do, like, she, like, some kind of work with, like, makeup and stuff like that in L.A. And he's, like, you know, they're out in the country and he doesn't want to go there. He's, like, a real country kind of guy. So, basically, because of all that, you know, they split and go their own directions, and it cuts to five years later. What ends up happening, though, is um, she ends up at the makeup place that she's doing. They want to do, like, a tour of a new makeup line, and she ends up having to go back to where she left, you know, where she was before, where her boyfriend was. 
And it's basically, though, about these dogs kind of coming back together again. And it's kind of, I don't want to say too much more what happens, but it becomes like kind of like a um, parent trap kind of thing. But this is actually, I, I thought this is actually, like I said, it's for kids, but it also has some like, a you know, stuff that adults would think is funny as well. Like, like also like a story-wise and everything. Like I said, this one here is called a uh, Puppy Swap, uh, Love Unleashed. And the next one here is from Fox. It's a movie here called Breakthrough. This one is based on a true story. This one stars Chrissy Metz from, you know, the show This Is Us. This is basically, though, about her son. You know, her son and his friends are out, you know, on top of the lake, which is frozen over, and they're kind of messing around on top of the lake. And it ends up cracking, and the son ends up, you know, falling into the water, and the friends are trying to get him out, and the, the, there's a place nearby, you know, across the lake that sees that they're out there, and they call the police, and the police come over there and the paramedics and they're there you know De you know, desperately trying to search for the, her for her son who's fallen under the ice, and you know he's way underneath the ice, and they're trying to figure out where he is to kind of f you know find him. And when they do end up bringing him out, though, he has no heartbeat and no pulse or anything, and he's passed away. So they're there doing CPR, and the one guy who's doing it is basically determined he's going to try anything he can to try and revive him. And he continuously is trying and trying, and they get him to the hospital. They continue CPR there. They're doing anything that they can, and it's looking like there's just no chance. Ants. But, you know, his uh, mother comes in and basically, you know, is basically praying over him and asking God, please bring, don't let my son go, Pre you know, please bring him back. And he ends up getting a very faint uh, pulse and heartbeat. And the doctors are like, you know, totally cannot believe this has happened because he's been gone for so long. And it's like, you know, they were trying for so long to revive him. And it's essentially, though, um, you know, because of the faith, you know, that they that's how, how she sees it is that's how he came back. But, you know, he's that's the, the very beginning of what's happened, though. Because of this, though, he's in a coma. The doctors are saying, though, since he's been, you know, you know, passed away for so long and, you know, that there's very little chance that he will probably ever return, you know, come back, come out of the coma and that there's probably if he does he will have very bad brain damage and all these things and it's essentially though about Chrissy Metz's character who's the mother you know with and her and her husband and everything and the whole town is pretty much praying over him and trying you know hoping that he will come back and Topher Grace plays the you know the preacher at the church that they're at and you know they have she has kind of her disagreements with him because he's kind of like you know he has a modern take on the church and religion and everything and she doesn't really like his modern takes so there's all kind of headbutting back and forth between them. This is actually a really, really well done movie here. Really, really, you know, good character piece. On here, feature wise, though, it has a making of the film. It also has on here a deleted scene. It has a commentary track on here with the director, as well as a still gallery on this one. And the next one I got here is from Warner Brothers. They sent her a free copy of this one to let you guys know that this is available. And this is the 4K Ultra HD edition here of Shazam. This movie, though, I saw this in theaters as well. I thought this is a really, really fun superhero movie. There's some really, really great comedy in this movie. Movie. Like all around to me, I feel like this movie just worked on all levels. Just a really funny movie. It had like it, throwbacks to me of like the movie Big, like some of the stuff that happens in this. It's basically though about this kid who, you know, is, you know, lives at this um, foster home and he just recently got there. And then the one night, though, he ends up unknowingly somehow, if you have to watch the movie to see exactly how this happens, he ends up getting this power where um, he can you know, transform into a full-grown adult with these superpowers, you know, and the character is Shazam, which he, if, he, if he says Shazam, he ends up turning into this full-grown adult. And, like, it's basically, though, him discovering this and then going back to the foster home, and then, like, it becomes this whole big thing. Like I said, it's got the vibe of big. But then there ends up being, like, um... Like Mark Strong's character, he's like this evil guy who's kind of coming after, you know, him. And it becomes this whole big, like, absolute nightmare of a situation for him. And, like, him dealing with these powers and everything. It's just, like I said, it's it's hard to explain everything that happens in here. It's just a really, really fun movie. I really, really like this one a lot. This one has on here, though, a whole bunch of different features. It has an alternate opening and ending on this one. It has deleted scenes. It has a gag reel. It has audition footage on this one. It has on set with Zachary Lee. Levi, a uh, feature out on here on Shazam's backstory. Uh, 4K wise, though, this one looks great on 4K. This is one of those ones, if you guys have 4K capacities, would highly, highly recommend you guys check this one out in 4K. It's like, a, it looks amazing in this, uh, you know, in 4K. It's one of those things, too. It is a super, super visual movie with all these kind of special effects and everything, the transformation scenes and everything. And it just, like, boosts the, everything up so much with this one. So if you guys have 4K, 
definitely, definitely, definitely recommend the 4K edition of this one. The next one here is from Warner Brothers as well. They sent over a free copy of this to let you guys know this is available. This is a show I had never seen before, and this is the complete first season of the show Titans. And this is a show that airs on the, um, that they, they play this on the DC network, which is the DC's uh, streaming network that they have. And this is, um, you know, the Teen Titan characters, but like this is a, the, uh, you know, adult version of it. Because this is a, you know, um, the thing that was cool about this was it was much more of an R-rated, uh, you know, DC show here. Because it's on their, since it's on their streaming network, it can be much more R-rated, like with the language and the, the violence and everything in this. But it's basically, though, about this one girl who, you know, kind of has these certain type of abilities where she can kind of, like, um, leave her body and, like, attack people and has, like, almost like she sees a version of herself telling her to do certain things and, and like, warning her of bad people and stuff stuff like that and like um you know her mother in the beginning of the movie is played by Sherilyn Finn which was cool to see her in the show but basically though something happens to her mother and this person is coming after the girl and she's kind of on the run and the one character here is this cop and he is like kind of investigating because this girl like tries to get herself arrested and he's you know you find out in the first episode is Robin because I knew right away I was like oh yeah this is Robin because they show what the stuff in the circus and everything you know at the, uh, the the tent and what happens to his family and then you come to find out more and more about the other characters in here like uh, Beast Boy and um, you know I don't know all the characters name but it has like um, and say some of the characters in here, yeah, yeah Beast Boy, uh, you know, Starfire, and you kind of kind of come to find out about the characters. But I don't know. I I really like this, like I said too, because it's like an R-rated, more adult take on one of these kind of shows. And like I think Swamp Thing is the same way. It's more of an R-rated kind of um, like TV MA take. That one I definitely hope that one comes to Blu-ray as well, because that's one of those ones I would really love to see. But on here too, it has like an episode guide, you know, for the eleven episodes that's on here and has a whole bunch of different features. It has a whole bunch of different, you know, featurettes. I believe it has um, 13 different featurettes on the show. So, like I said, highly recommend you guys check this one out. If you guys have seen this too, let me know in the comments, you know, below what you guys think of this show. The next one here is from um, uh, Epic Pictures' uh, Dread Presents line, or Dread line, and it's a uh, movie here called There Inside. You guys can order this one on their website. I have a link below to the Epic Pictures' website. This is actually cool. This was... um. It starts off in the very beginning. I will say I wish the character in the very beginning was in the movie more because I really wanted to see like more of what this character was doing because he was like this you know YouTube vlogger guy and he was like going oh I, I I've got uh, celebrating three million subscribers and I can't I'm so excited about this I have so many big plans and then you see the, the character like peek behind the the window because he sees he's shooting right in front of a window and comes in there and then he kills him and it's like um. And it cuts to these group of these friends who are coming together, like friends and the the one and this, this these two sisters, and then like their friends, and there's also some of these actors they hired because they're making this movie that they they ended up having like um somebody like had like a contest kind of thing where you write something and if you if you get picked you can shoot at their you know house for free and it was kind of a house kind of out in the middle of the country kind of area in the middle of the woods so they the one entered the 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 story that they wanted to make. And she wanted to make. So they end up, you know, winning so they can shoot for free out in this kind of cabin house out in the middle of the woods. But when they go out there, though, it's all done found footage of the one character is like filming like the behind the scenes of it. Or the majority, I think it was all found footage, unless I'm mixing it all up, but I'm pretty sure most of it was found footage. But yeah, yeah, well, it was all found footage. Because like they basically, though, are filming like the behind the scenes about making it. Yeah, because it's found footage, and then it kind of cuts to the footage that, um, it's like the camera footage of the actual movie that they're making. But they're basically making the movie on the one girl's life and her life with her sister and her relationship and everything and then of course when they're out there though they start noticing that there's weird things going on and you know they start kind of like um hearing these weird noises going out in the woods like someone's like chopping wood and making all sorts of noise and it just becomes basically as you know from the very beginning of this movie you know what happened to that guy you know whoever these people are are coming for them and it's basically them out there dealing with this whole thing and it's kind of messing up their, their movie and their like their dreams of making this movie and everything I, I like this movie I thought there was some really cool stuff that happens in here and it also has some really interesting like directions with um that pay like pay off and stuff like that of the, you know 
know, like, I don't want to say too much of what happens, but they definitely were very effective with making you think certain things. On here, though, this has two commentary tracks on here with the directors, has behind the scenes videos, it has um, short, uh, you know, uh, two short films on this one, trailer, te and a teaser as well on this one. The next ones here are from uh, Midnight Factory, and these are, you know, from, and they're from like their Midnight Classics line, or the first one's from the Midnight Classics lines, but these are two uh, Italian releases. And this is a really cool set here, and these are movies that I absolutely love these movies. You guys have heard me talk about these a lot in the past, especially, uh, as much as I love the first movie, I love part two, even though part two has nothing to do with the first one at all. It's just, it was an Italian film, and they put, you know, uh, the, since Troll was a popular movie, they put, called it Troll 2, but it's, it's, it's the Troll and Troll 2 collection here. This is the limited three-disc collection. With, now, this one, though, keep in mind, this one is Region B locked, so you guys would have to have an all-region, you know, region-free Blu-ray player to play this one, or, of course, be in the, re, you know, Region B, uh, you know, coding zone to watch this one. But it also includes uh, Best Worst Movie, which is, you know, uh, Michael Paul Stevenson, who starred in Troll 2. It was his documentary that he made about, you know, all the behind the scenes go on about, you know, making Troll 2 and the fandom and the people who get together and watch it all the time and the recreations and everything that people do and the locations and all that kind of stuff. It's a great documentary. If you guys have never seen Best Worst Movie, that's an absolute must watch. Even if you guys have never seen Troll 2, it's one of those documentaries you'd still be able to figure it out. And I think you'd still like it just as much even knowing nothing about it because he did a really good job making it so even if you don't know the movie you can still understand what's going on but you know the first troll was about a family that moved to this new house and of course, though, there was something, you know, new apartment building, and there was some weird going-ons in there, and it was basically about this troll that kind of, you know, came and, like, took over the sister, and, like, you know, impersonated the sister and everything, and it's a kid, you know, named Harry Potter, you know, who ended up, you know, this is before Harry Potter, that, there was actually a whole big thing about that, you know, that's, like, where the Harry Potter name came from, was from Troll, and essentially, though, um, you know, kind of the, the brother is trying to figure out how to, you know, what's going on and starts noticing there's stuff happening in this in this apartment building. And Troll 2, though, is about this family that goes to stay in Neilbog. And the people in Neilbog go and stay in their house, and they basically swap keys and stay in each other's houses. And Joshua there, you know, knows that there's something off going in there because he's been warned by his dead grandfather, who warns him, you know, that there's something going on in this town. But Troll 2 is amazing. I've always loved the movie. I loved the movie before people were even saying it was like a bad movie. I saw it as a little kid. I remember renting it from Blockbuster before I knew anything about it. it was a bad movie or anyone said it was bad or anything. I remember renting it. It was brand new from the fantasy section in, uh, in, you know, in Blockbuster and absolutely loving it and watching it again and again and renting it all the time and then having to like um, I think I finally found a copy of it on VHS at Virgin Records when I went there in Florida. I remember like I was so happy when I found one. But in here though, here's a look in Side. And this is like the, you know, the poster for the first Troll movie. And then it has the, um, it's a three disc set. It has Troll, Troll 2, and then Best Worst Movie. But in here, though, it has a booklet, you know, in Italian with stuff about the movie. And here's, a, you know, the Troll from the first movie. And, and I don't know, I just think these are really great movies. I, like I said, I've watched both of these movies so many times. They're just absolutely such fun films. And like, especially Troll 2 is just so goofy. It also has these like um, cards. This is the Troll 2 image that I always remember, this one. Because I was always like, who is that kid? That kid is not in this movie. And this thing is, th this thing is, I always wanted to see a movie too of this kind of troll kind of creature. I'm like, that'd be really weird to finally see like this movie. Because this is not that movie. And then, uh, of course, you know, the poster, you know, the original artwork here for Troll. But a really, really cool set here. If you guys are, you know, have not seen both of these movies, you know, great. But like I said, just keep in mind, these ones are both region B locked. And the next one here is from uh, Mid. Night Factory as well. Now this one though is all region. So this one you guys can watch in a standard US Blu-ray player. You don't have to have any special region free or anything. So this one has no region code locking. It's a movie here called The Night Watchman. And this one, uh, Tiffany Shepis has a little part in this movie. Uh, I thought this was a really cool movie. This is basically though about this guy who gets a job being the night watchman at this um, kind of office building. I, I don't know exactly what they do there. It's like sort of like they, I think it's like a newspaper kind of place or something. But basically, though, he, he gets a job there. And it's, it's kind of got like um, sort of like humor of like office space a little bit in here. 
that, that kind of like goofy kind of humor mixed in because he gets a job there and he's working with these guys and they're, they have like great like banter back and forth kind of banter with them and like giving each other all kind of crap about things but basically what happens at the very beginning of this movie you find out that this clown who was like a world famous clown you know, this movie actually takes place in Baltimore which is pretty cool but this clown who was really popular in Baltimore and he was went to like another country like with this troop and like um, all the clowns in this troop ended up dying in this weird way and they don't exactly know what had happened and they were shipping all the bodies back to Baltimore to be buried and everything to be examined and it, by mistake though the one main clown who was like the world famous Baltimore clown his his ca coffin gets shipped to this office building factory kind of building where this new kid just started working and you know they, they end up leaving the body there because like the guys that are doing it like don't have time to take it to the, the correct place and everything so they don't want to deal with it so they're like we'll come and get it tomorrow but what ends up happening though is that body comes back to life and this is a vampire movie so it's basically though about this clown and then like spreading other becoming you know causing other people to become vampires and causing all sorts of havoc in this office building and it's about the security night watchmen having to try and survive and like figure out exactly what they're going to do but I really like this one and Tiffany Shepard's character like I said she has a part in here you know working in the office building and it's just a really fun crazy wacky like over the top movie with some really really fun aspects to this movie like I said really really glad to get to see this movie here here's a look though inside and inside though is a booklet which has you know some stuff about the movie and some pictures like here's a picture of Tiffany Shepis in here some you know pictures from behind the scenes and everything but just a really really fun movie another one if you guys have seen this one let me know what you guys thought of it then the next two are from um, ITN uh, distribution and both these ones are also available in uh, Walmart this is a movie here called a uh, nightmare shark this is, and this is a cool concept. This is about people who are having like horrible dreams about sharks and some horror dreams as well though, but they all kind of come together, other kind of dreams as well, but mainly dealing with sharks. And they all end up going to this... Um, facility where they like research dreams and stuff to sort of try and help them because they become like you know like all, they're having all these problems sleeping and everything because of these dreams but it's like kind of like Freddy Krueger Nightmare on Elm Street kind of situations because it's like in these dreams it's like these sharks are like attacking them and like they can die in their dreams and it has like real like Nightmare on Elm Street kind of vibes so instead of Freddy Krueger it's a shark coming after these people so and it's kind of like the one Nightmare on Elm Street I think it was like the Dream Warriors I can't remember if that was the third movie or the fourth movie where they were all kind of together in that building talking about their dreams and stuff like that it was kind of like that one a little bit and um but essentially, though, they're all there, and the guy who there is kind of researching it, the, the doctor, and he's kind of, you know, looking into the whole thing, and some people there think they're crazy, and all, all sorts of stuff going on. But like I said, this is a pretty cool concept of a movie here, and this was also uh, written by Griff First, who, you know, wrote and directed, um, or, you know, was the director of the movie Ghost Shark, which I was in. So really cool to see this one here. This one here is from ITN Distribution as well. It's a movie here called The Immortal, uh, Immortal Wars uh, Resurgence. Uh, yeah, Resurgence, and this one has... Eric Robertson here, uh, Bill Oberst Jr., Minnie Robinson is in this movie. And this is uh, the sequel to Immortal Wars. And this is basically, though, about Eric Roberts' character. Is like has this kind of show. It's kind of has like um, Running Man kind of vibes a little bit. Also, like Hunger Games vibes mixed in. Like kind of all those kind of things meshed together, like Hunger Games, uh, Running Man. Because there's like, this is all set in the future. A lot of people have died, and there's all kind of problems in the world. And he has this kind of show. Eric Roberts' character has this show where he like broadcasts these people who have like powers, like fighting people and trying to survive and everything. And like it's kind of this really successful, popular show. And it's about the one girl who like these group of these people kind of come to try and rescue her and get her out of this place. And it's because of that though they're coming to rescue her. It becomes like um, you know Eric Roberts sends all these people like after that his character sends all these people after them trying to track them. down down and find him and everything because they want her to be back on this show that that's essentially what it is but it's got it's a crazy like um Lots of like big special effects and stuff and big fight scenes and stuff that happen in this one. This one has on here though a bunch of different features on here. It has the Return to Immortals featurettes, uh, Sympathy of War featurette, it has a gag reel, it has a sneak peek of the Immortal Wars, the, uh, the prequel to Immortal Wars film as well on this one. But like a really pretty cool, like, uh, like I said, it's got vibes of like, you know, sort of Hunger Games mixed with like Running Man, those sort of feels in there, you know, to the film. And the next ones here I got are all from Wellgo USA. These are ones that I just 
one that you guys know were available. Now this one comes out next Tuesday. This is a film which is a spin-off from the Ip Man series. This is a Master Z Ip Man Legacy. Now this one's really cool is it stars um, you know Dave Batista's in this film. You know I just talked about the film that he was in Stuber today in the you know the in the car review that I did. But I always really like Batista. You know he was in the newest Blade Runner film and he's in a bunch of different stuff and I always really like you know the parts that he plays and he's always really good and everything. So it was really cool to see him in this one. Now this one has on here feature wise it has the original language version as well as the English language version available as well. Also has behind the scenes and trailers on this one. Now these next two, these don't come out next Tuesday, they come out the following Tuesday. And this one here is a movie called The Island. This is a really fun like comedy with drama aspects to it. And it's about this like meteorite that's coming and what basically it is though is about a group of these people who all work together and they're all on one of those kind of career building kind of job, you know, uh, trips together. They're out in this boat there ends up being this big storm and they end up getting washed ashore and stuck on this island. And it's basically though following around the people that are there and it's kind of them sort of stuck there having to deal with each other and then like having all sorts of problems. And it has sort of like a Lord of the Flies kind of vibes a little bit because like one guy kind of takes charge and then they kind of break off into groups and they have all sorts of problems. They're trying to figure out exactly how they're going to get off of this island and then having like all these disagreements with each other and everything. But this was actually really really cool movie here and the last one here from uh, well go USA uh, that I want to let you guys know was available as well this one comes out not next Tuesday the following Tuesday and this is a movie here called the swindlers this is a movie though about a group of these people who normally wouldn't be working together they're all working together to try and track down and find this con man and it's like these people that are having all kind of problems with each other and stuff trying to find this one guy like I said just want you guys to know that this one was available as well and this one is called the swindlers and the next one here is from MVD, and this is one I want to let you guys know is available. This is from the MVD Marquee line. It's a movie here called Shortcut to Happiness. This stars, um, uh, you know, Alec Baldwin, Anthony Hopkins, Jennifer Love Hewitt, uh, Dan Aykroyd, and Kim Cattrall are in this film. Really, really good cast. It's a really fun movie. It's basically, though, about Alec Baldwin's character, who's this writer, who is really trying to get, you know, his book published. He's having terrible luck. No one's really listening to him or, you know, taking the time to read it. And he's like, oh, I I'd sell my soul to, you know, get published and you know the devil shows up to him you know played by Jennifer Love Hewitt and basically you know uh, he ends up selling his soul to her and it's what ends up happening though is like you know things are working out he finally is getting to get this book published and there's all these big orders and everything but you know it's one of those kind of things where it's kind of too good to be true and there ends up being a whole lot of problems and he's really regretting that he did this and it's essentially him trying to figure out like what he can do to like you know you know go back to normal and get rid of you know what he has done and get his soul back and just kind of forget that he did this because it's like I said it's all sorts of problems but it's a really really fun movie here and this one has on here Oh, feature wise it has a theatrical trailer and the next one I got here is from MVD as well and this is a movie I want to let you guys know is available and it's called Hail Mary uh, Get Ready for the Sumo Bowl this is basically though about this football team which is having horrible luck with winning they continuously are losing games they've lost 32 games in a row they don't really know you know what to do the coach doesn't know what to do they're just having absolutely no luck at all and they end up coming up with the idea of trying to fill the team with sumo wrestlers so they want to go and like bring sumo wrestlers over from Japan and have them you know fill like the whole defensive line of the team and have them you know you know try and see if you know this will finally work so like it be, they become like this undefeatable you know team and will finally start winning so it's essentially though about them training them who come over and it's just actually a really really fun uh, crazy movie here this one has on here feature wise it has a comic book teaser trailer as well as a, a, a trailer on this for the movie as well uh, the next one here is from MVD as well what some of you guys know is available this is also a um, Cleopetra Entertainment title and this is a movie here called uh, Chain of Death and this one stars uh, Adrian Barbeau as well as Ray Weiss. This is basically though about this guy who finds out that his father is going through like a Parkinson's kind of disease and he's like his mother he's played by Adrian Barbeau and like she's having a really hard time taking care of him because of what's going on and he's having all kinds of problems that are you know getting worse and worse and worse and he finds out though that he has the same type of condition that his father has and this is basically though he, you know he doesn't want to put his wife through this and have his wife go through the same type of thing so he ends up wanting to end his life and he finds out about this group where you know they will assist you in ending your life but you end up having to kill someone else 
you know, first. And if they do that, then you will be, you know, they will end your life. And it's a really interesting uh, concept here. This one has on here, though, uh, deleted scenes, a theatrical trailer on this one, as well as an uh, image uh, slideshow. And the next one here is from Artsploitation Films. It's a movie here called uh, Blood Paradise. This is about this woman who is this author who was really successful, and she's had, like, a lot of success, but, like, her last book, you know, um, people were saying like, oh, you know, you're better than that last book. You know, your last book wasn't that great. You need to kind of work on it and try and, you know, do stuff like your first couple books. And she ends up going, where was she going to? I think it was to, um, to the, she goes to Sweden to basically go there and into the countryside area to do like, kind of try and hopefully get like some inspiration and kind of take a break and see if she can kind of go out there and like write her next big novel. And that's kind of what it is, is to try and do this. But when, when she gets her though, she gets picked up by this like real oddball guy who's like her driver and he's like really obsessed with her books. And even he's saying like, oh, you know, you can write way better than that last book. And he's like having her sign all the books and everything. And he's like, yeah, but that last one wasn't great. So even he's giving her problems, but she goes out there and essentially, though, where she's staying, it's, like, in this weird kind of place and, like, the weird people that, like, um, live there. And it's basically, though, you know, like, something is not good, what's happening. And it becomes, like, like dealing with this fan and the weird people living in this house. And it becomes this really crazy situation of what she's going through and everything. It's hard to explain everything, but I thought this was actually pretty cool, uh, you know, this way this was put together. This has on here the deleted scenes as well as uh, music videos on this one. And the next one here is from SRS Cinema. It's a movie here called Deadly Playthings. This one here is directed by Mark Polonia. This is basically, though, about in the beginning of this movie, there's this one girl who is like, um, she's like seeing like spirits and seeing dead people and everything. And her parents like don't know what to do. And they end up having her go to therapy. And the therapist is saying, because she has like this doll that she, you know, brings along with her and everything. And she, the therapist is like, well, what you should do is, you know, since you're seeing these things, the way to trap these spirits is to end up like, you know, thinking and willing the spirits to go into this doll and then they'd be trapped in the doll. So basically, though, that's what she does and, and the spirit ends up getting trapped in the doll and then it's, you know, years later, the house that she was at is for sale and this new family is like looking at, you know, buying the place and everything and coming in there. And essentially, though, of course, you know, they move into this place and then the, um, the girl there and the family, the new family that's moved in, they're starting to kind of experience weird things in the house and you see somebody who breaks into the house in the beginning as well. Something bad happens to him. So it's basically though, it ends up being this huge nightmare of a situation of them in this house and they're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do and everything. This one has on here though, feature wise, has a commentary track on this one as well as our trailers. And the last one here is from um, uh, Wild Eye Releasing. It's a movie here called Twelve Pole Manor. And this one, this is a pretty cool movie. I really, really like the music in this movie as well. This has really cool, like, 80s-style synth music. But this is basically, though, about a group of these friends who are trying to, like, get into the business of, like, flipping houses and selling them. Like, buying houses, like, super, super cheap. And it's, like, um, you know, they're almost, like, too good to be true. Kind of, like, it's, like, because this house they buy is only, like, $29,000. And they're, like, oh, well, worst case, we can make this much money if we clean you know clean the place up and fix it all up and do like this like the bare minimum and um but of course so they're asking questions going like did anything weird ever happen there to the realtor and she's like oh well it's this is a really old house i'm sure there people have died here in the past it's really really old but at the very beginning of this movie though you see someone who's gotten like killed there out front so you know something bad has happened and of course though as soon as they buy this house though you know uh somebody ends up going to this house and like gets electrocuted and essentially though it's basically they ended up buying this house where it's like there's some kind of a curse to it and you know bad things start to happen to them while they're there and it becomes a horrible horrible situation but it's actually really pretty cool there was cool uh like you know crazy like effects in this one as well like some crazy like deaths and stuff in this movie and like i said i really really like the music as well in this one this one's from wild eye releasing uh feature wise though this has behind the scenes an alternate opening uh bloopers outtakes and trailers on this one but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing and I'll see you guys later.